Hi guys, and welcome. Today's project is making this piece of Christmas yard art. Before I start, I'd like to thank Michael over at the Joe's CNC Forum. Thanks a lot for all the help you've given me over the years and teaching me how to make these here. Without you, I would never have figured it out. Now fortunately, there isn't a lot of artistic skill required to make these. Once you've got them cut out, it's something the whole family can enjoy. You can get the kids involved painting it up. Before long, if you make one or two a year, you can end up like me with lots of bits of painted plywood out on your front lawn. They really are a lot of fun to make. So sit back and enjoy while I do all the hard work and make one. So after doing the pocket, I found I had an issue here where I had a large piece of plywood chip out. Normally I wouldn't worry too much about it a little bit. You don't generally get to see it from a distance. And when it's painted black, it doesn't tend to show up if it's small. But this one here was just far too large to ignore. What I ended up doing is I ended up lifting a piece of plywood veneer from the sheet of plywood and then I cut and shaped it into a couple of pieces to fill in the hole here. The next thing I need to do is I need to reshape these here correctly to match the rest of the uh, cutout. Now I could just rerun the pocket file and that would correctly shape it but that will just take too long and because this glue I've only allowed it to about two hours to dry I want to take it really easy on this glue joint. So what I've decided to do is I've made a new file. I've selected this area here and this area here and I'm going to run a inside toolpath around here and I'm only going to cut down half a millimetre at a time which will reduce the amount of stress put on this piece of wood. I've also reshaped in here a little bit on the file because this piece is meant to be one continuous cut out here and so at the same time it's going to reshape in here and it'll form this into one channel. Well, I can honestly say this has not been my finest hour. I can't believe I forgot to turn the camera on before I started machining this little piece here. It has come out just beautifully. I'm really pleased with the, this repair. You'll never see it once it's primed and painted. What I'm not pleased about is I forgot to set my cutter properly. For some obscure reason, I created this file and told it it was a 13 millimeter thick piece of plywood. Unfortunately, it's only 12 millimeters and it's cut a millimeter deep into my table here. So that means I've got Santa Claus imprint on my table until I get around to resurfacing it again sometime in the future. Now the fun part begins. We first of all need to prime the finished cutout. Before I did that, I gave it a quick rub down with sandpaper to try and get rid of uh, the worst of the furry bits, especially around these edges here. Uh, these are the bits that concern me most. It's not too much point worrying too much in here because it's the uh, I'm using acrylic undercoat. It's going to lift any grain in here anyway. And to me, it adds, it adds a bit of texture. So long as it doesn't look hot, hideous, I'm fine with it. But uh, definitely around these edges, you want to make sure these edges are looking good. So do run your sandpaper around them. And 
Now I'm just going to take the undercoat and put it on. You'll find it'll actually take quite a lot to get these here covered. And we need to get everywhere covered. Now I've got two other brushes here. And the problem is getting the primer into these and around these areas here. So that's where these smaller brushes are just worth their weight in gold. They allow you to get right into these corners and they also allow you to remove any excess paint buildup that gets into them. So I'm basically using the big brush here to get uh, quick coverage over the large areas. Then I'll follow up with the smaller brush to clean everything up. And we want to get primer over everything, otherwise our top coat just won't cover properly. So here we are, ready for the fun part, the actual painting bit. As you can see, I've finished priming it, and I've primed both sides, so it's ready to go. I've got together some brushes. I've got uh, brushes of varying sizes, from the very large to do the large areas here, to the small ones to do the uh, fine fiddlier bits in here. I also printed out a picture showing the colours that uh, could possibly go on here. I'm going to change them a little bit, but it's a good general chart to know what should be what colour. And I've also got myself a selection of paints. These ones here are done by resin. They're just test pots. But I like the resin ones here because unlike most test pots you buy, these ones are rated for outdoors. So I get uh, to buy only small quantities of the paint I want and I get it with an outdoor rating. So we need, I need to start putting the paint on. I'm going to start with the, uh, with the Santa Claus red, which is here, which I'm going to be using a, uh, a bright red. So let's get in here and give this a bit of a stir up. There's not much of this left. I've used this here for quite a while now and it's uh, It's gone a long way. It's quite surprising how how far it goes. Now with that undercoat on there, this covers just beautifully. Don't get too worried about the colour spilling over onto these areas here because we'll take care of that later. But just a word of warning, this area is going to be white, so I really do not want red paint getting into there. So I'll, I'll definitely be careful where I'm going to have colours that will not cover one another. So just as a word of warning, uh, red is very, very hard to cover with white paint. So um, you just end up with getting pink, uh, the red just sort of bleeds through. So just be very wary of that. But don't worry too much about it getting onto these areas here, because these here are gonna be painted black and uh, we'll get coverage on them, no problem. This is the next colour, it's called Red Berry. And this is going to do the Santa's sack. In here. Now it's time for the white, and this is actually the hardest to put on because it's actually quite difficult to see. It also doesn't give you the effect that you're actually achieving anything because uh, once you're finished, it'll still look exactly the same. And this particular one has quite a lot in it. I'm using a small brush with short bristles on it to get best control over this brush I can. I don't want any of the red, which well, seems to border all my white here, getting on it. Even a small spot of, of red on this here will just turn the whole thing pink. So do be exceedingly careful when putting it on. 
Now the next color I want to put on is this one here. It's called uh, cashmere. Again, it's resine color, so it doesn't really help those who who don't get resine. But this one I'm going to use for the face. It's a, a good flesh, a good flesh color. I've tried mixing them in the past and found that uh, I was never very successful. The other advantage of having pre-mixed colors where you can is that they will always be right. If you do need to touch something up, you've got the color. You can just lay your hand on it and touch it up. If you're using a pre-mixed color, the chances are you'll never get it right. Well, certainly I won't anyway. And you're going to have to do the whole thing. The whole area will need to be repainted because it, it just won't be right. Next color I'll put on is the blue. And this one's called uh, Tory Blue. It hasn't been open for a while. It's going to be for the present. So it's that one, that one, and that one. Sometimes it's very handy to mark out which ones you're going to paint, especially if it's not obvious. Now a little bit of green is required, and the picture shows green a green bow here and a darker green in here. What I'm going to do though is I'm just going to put a green a bit of a shake in here. I'm going to make the go uh, bow uh, the bow in this case uh, gold. For no other reason than I can. And you notice my colors are really bright, sort of somewhat gaudy colors. But as far as I'm concerned, when you're doing these sorts of things, it's a cartoon. And I think they look better in bright colors. Now we need a nice gold color. And that'll be this one here, called Gold Dust. And that should look quite good just in here. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. I want some brown for the hair on the doll there. And as far as I can tell, I don't seem to have any. I now need to mix one up. And according to the color chart here, which I got from an artist shop, if I take orange and add blue to it, I should end up with a brown color. We can but try and see what we end up with. So I'm gonna grab two different brushes. I don't want to use the same brush. I'm going to take a bit of blue and just put it down on the bit of cardboard here. A bit more. And I'm going to take some orange and lay that down. And I'll use a third brush to mix them together and see what I end up with. Well, so far I certainly wouldn't want here that colour. I think if I had here that colour, I'd get it cut off. It doesn't look too bad. I'll just add this last bit in there with the using the smaller brush. And basically that's an orange I can live with. Or brown I should say that I can live with. So I'm just gonna now paint the hair brown. Now the problem with mixing colours like this is I have to be exceedingly careful when it comes time to put in the finishing coat on this because 
There is no way that I will ever be able to rematch this uh, colour brown. I basically just don't have an eye for the colour. And uh, I'll just need to completely re redo it. But that is looks just like the sort of brown that I'm after. So there you are, if you are mixing brown, uh, you want lots of orange and a little bit of a little bit of blue, so don't overdo the blue as I did. I've given all the colours here a second coat, which is just even them out. And now time has come to put the black on. Now I'm going to start by doing it at the back, and I'm going to use a roller. I've got the small roller, it's got a very small nap on it. And I'm going to start by going around the edges where I can and get those. Anywhere I can't get with the roller, I'll come back and get with the brush. Sure beats using a brush for these things. Now that it's done like that, I can now take a brush and just quickly go around it and get all those edges that were missed by the roller, all those fiddly bits that I couldn't get into because of the roller's diameter. Well, we're just about there. The back's now been done. I've done the edges. Hopefully I haven't missed anywhere, but if I have, I can touch them up later. For those who are looking for a small roller, this is the one I've been using. It costs about five bucks. Uh, it's, a, it's a small plastic roller. It's got a, a low nap on the roller itself. And uh, I just picked it up at a local paint shop. And the plastic cover that it comes in is actually a, a paint tray as well, although it's basically a piece of rubbish. But these rollers are just great for this particular job. Now, this is the part I really look forward to on these jobs. We're going to run the roller around the surface here and it will really bring this here to life. It's the part I look forward to on these jobs, but you do need to be careful. You, you do want to take it easy. Just roll it around like that. Just very lightly. Let it roll. Don't push too hard. Because you will be surprised how far down the, the roller will actually go and it'll get onto these surfaces if you're not careful. You can do this with a paintbrush if you so wish as well, but this is definitely the easy way. So I'm barely, I'm not really even pushing on the, on the roller at all. I'm just letting it roll its way around like so and do its thing. It's just amazing what adding this little bit of black to this here does to the finished job. Well, I think you'll agree with me. That's come out looking really great. 
And as you can see from the video, it's really easy to do. No major piece of artistic skill required. Just colour it in, basically. Now you'll notice I made mine out of half inch plywood, or 12 millimetres here. This it makes it ideal for screwing to a fence, as I've done with mine. But if you want to mount it separately out on the lawn, as I've done with some of my others, then a little bit thicker plywood, somewhere around the three quarter inch range, even a little bit thicker. The extra plies just give it that added strength and stop it from bending and warping under the weather conditions. Having said that, I have made mine, some of mine out of half inch plywood in the past and it lasted several years until somebody went and stole it off my front lawn. So it can't be that bad. Well I hope you've enjoyed this Christmas project as much as I have. If you'd like to make your own, I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can download the files and make your own. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube and follow me on Google+. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.